These are Super GoBots, the mightiest GoBots of all. Stacks leader one and Psy kill sold separately. Think you're big enough for the king of the road? Try me. Mighty GoBots, mighty vehicles, GoBots. Two big stacks. Not so fast, Psy kill. Thanks, good buddy. Super GoBots, stacks leader one and Psy kill each sold separately from Tonka. Hey guys, welcome back, as this week I'm going to be taking a look at an often forgotten about toy line, the Super Gobots by Tonka. The Gobots line of transforming toy robots, or otherwise known in Japan as Machine Robo, was released in Japan in 1983 and slightly before Hasbro's Transformers in fall of 1984 in America. They were mainly known for their smaller size and rather poor transformation and style compared to the larger-than-life lore of their counterparts, the Transformers. As the GoBots would only have one animated feature, Challenge of the GoBots, compared to the Transformers, which had its own feature-length blockbuster movie and a cartoon series that ran for four seasons, five in Japan, under the Headmasters. It always felt like Tonka and Bandai were playing catch-up to Hasbro. In 1984, Tonka and Bandai released a solution that they thought would finally get them up to speed with their rivals with the release of Tonka's Super GoBots. Many of the same characters were included in this new line of toys, but with one big difference. They were bigger. Standing at almost 5 inches tall, the new Super Gobots were as large and sometimes larger than most Transformers figures, giving them a much more premium feel with more complex transformations, weapons, and accessories, and real die-cast parts. Now your Super Gobots were ready to take on anything. Maybe even the Transformers? Or at least that's what was Tonka was hoping for. With a line of three different series of Guardians, the Heroic Gobots, and Renegades, Evil Gobots, and 20 different figures to choose from, Tonka was all in and moving forward full throttle with TV commercials and magazine ads to fully support their new line and get it off the ground running. You had three series. In Series 1, you had two Guardians and four Renegades released. For the Guardians, you had Baron Von Joy, a Porsche 930, Zemon, a Datsun 280ZX, and for the Renegades, you had Bugbite, a Volkswagen 1303S Beetle, Destroyer, a Leopard 1 MBT, Her Fiend, a Porsche 928, and Psycho, a Psychoroid. In Series 2, there were five Guardians and two Renegades released. For the Guardians, there were Defender, an Alvis Saladin, Super Leader 1, the leader of the Guardians, a F-15 Eagle, Super Spacey, a Space Shuttle, Stax, a semi-trailer truck, two versions were released, one with a transport carrier and one with no carrier. And for the Renegades you had Super Psykill, the leader of the Renegades, a motorcycle, and Warpath, an AH-64 Apache. In Series 3, there were four Guardians and three Renegades released. For the Guardians you had Razor, a F-4 Phantom II helicopter, Super Cooper, a 1934 Ford Coupe, Spy Eye, a Panvia Tornado IDS, and Throttle, a BMW K100 motorcycle. And for the Renegades, you had Clutch, a Ford F250 pickup, Night Fright, a MIL MI24 Hind, and Super Vamp, a monster jet. Unfortunately, by the end of the 1986 Christmas season, Tonka had no plans to continue the Super Gobots line due to declining interest and low sales. With deep discounts on the brand worldwide, the Mighty Gobots had fought the good fight against the big guys and lost, it would seem. The future of the toy line was uncertain with rocky new ideas from Tonka on the horizon. But fear not, citizens of Gobatron. In 1991, a truce would finally be called by the two opposing robotic sides, and Hasbro would bring the Gobots into the fold as a part of the Transformers continuity. All right, hey guys, welcome back. As this week, I'm gonna be taking a look at a kind of overlooked and forgotten about toy line, and that's the Super GoBots from Bandai and the GoBots line of toys. Now, I know the GoBots, a lot of people have mixed feelings about them. Some people like them, some people think they're junk. A lot of people tend to think they're just kind of cheap, easily broken Transformers knockoffs that don't have the best transformations and just kind of look stupid. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't disagree more because I love GoBots. I had so many of these things growing up. I was lucky enough to have both Transformers, GoBots, although I had so many toys, I can't even begin to list them all um, to begin with. That's another story for another time. But I, I love the GoBots. I had the play sets. Um, I don't remember if I had any of the Super GoBots or not. I might have had uh, Stacks, which is this guy right here, a little orange tractor trailer. 
Um, but I don't think I had too, too many of these. I wish I had known about them more when I was growing up because they're awesome, um, they're fun, and they're the larger counterparts to compete with um, the Transformers line as, uh, you know, Bandai and uh, in Japan known as Machine Robo, they noticed that this line was having a really hard time um, digging its heels in and getting its feet off the ground. And just when, you know, you're trying to compare this to Transformers, it's not that GoBots are bad, but it's just look at what they're up against. You know, the Transformers are so awesome, you know, and they're big, you know, larger than life transformations and play sets. So they had to up their game and that's where they came out with the Super GoBots, which they made a line of 20 of these. Although I believe technically it's 19 because Stax has a version where he has a trailer. So it's the same, um, the same character, the same figure, except just one has a trailer, one does not. So I guess there's technically 20, but it's really just 19 individual uh, figures that were produced. And the cool thing about this too is that these are the larger counterparts to the smaller GoBots. So you have like Psykill, Leader One, and these were um, figures that you would see in the main line and they're little like two inch form. And now they're in like a five, you know, almost six inch high uh, form, which is about the size of a regular transformer, which is really, really cool. So I have eight of these guys here I'm gonna take a look at today. I have five of the Guardians, which if you know anything about, uh, you know, uh, Battle of the GoBots and GoBots lore, Guardians are the quote unquote good guys, you know, on GoBotron. And then you have the Renegades led by Psykill, which are the evil uh, GoBots led on Gobatron, which are trying to enslave the entire planet, and yada, yada, yada. If you haven't ever seen uh, Battle of the Gobots, check it out. It's a really cool uh, series and fun to watch. So anyway, let's get right into it, and we'll start by taking a look at some of the Guardians. And right off the bat, we'll take a look at everybody's, uh, one of the most favorite um, Guardian known Gobots, and that would be Leader One. And this is him in his uh, F-15 fighter pilot mode. And he has a little cool feature that I forgot to engage, which is his landing gear that you pop out underneath. And these things are uh, considerably die-cast metal, which makes them much more premium. The center here is metal, the wheels are metal. That way he stands up nice. Now he's not broken, it's just the pins on his wings. They're really worn down, so they don't, um, they don't stay in position like they should. But you can see the nice red, white, and blue with the, uh, the bright blue stars and the red and white stripes with the uh, kind of like the US Military Air Force logo here. Uh, you have around the cockpit on the nose and the stars, more of the striping around the side. Uh, you have a little logo underneath here. It says US 86 L1s. That's probably the model of a fighter plane it's supposed to be, even though it's basically just an F-15 stealth fighter fighter jet. And then on the back, which is really, really cool, I think, aside from all your different rudders and things like that, you have the, uh, the, the, the jet engines, which are a nice silver chrome. I mean, it's a little worn now, but it's still, that's a nice little premium effect. And it adds a really, really nice touch. So now he sits at a, probably about four to five inches in length. And it's, it's really nice. It's a really nice premium feel weighted toy. And it makes me wonder, how would the GoBots have done if they had never come out with the smaller versions and you had only seen these larger versions? And if these had been the main toys that competed with Transformers to begin with, I wonder if they, you know, wouldn't have had to, uh, you know, be put on the back burner, so to say. If they would have shared more of the limelight and maybe be a little bit more respected today, even though I think they're still a well-loved franchise. Um, so now let's take uh, Leader One and let's get him into his robot mode. So we'll flip him over here and put his landing gear back, which is really cool. I, I think that's such a neat little feature. And then you just pull his legs down like so. There we are. And then you flip these little rudders to the side. And then we turn them around here. And then you just pull his arms out. And there you go. We have our fully transformed uh, Leader One figure. And he has that iconic silver faceplate, the eye plate and faceplate. And still, you know, he's definitely basic. He's a basic um, Transformer. And a lot of these like, well, sorry, Transformer, um, you know, Gobot. Uh, but a lot of them, they didn't really have weapons. Some of them, they had weapons you could put in 
I don't believe Leader One came with them, but a few of these did come with um, with weapons. But that was one of the problems with the Gobots line is, you know, their hands are so basic. It was just that typical Japanese style of, uh, you know, transformable robots with Machine Robo and other types of lines that you got at the time. And, um, you know, it, it just didn't have that premium look where with Transformers you could put guns and accessories in their hands, you know, their laser blasters and made them look a lot nicer. But overall, I still think Leader One looks really good. And it's a nice little, uh, nice, well, not little, but nice large figure, actually. Now let's take a look at Stax. Stax is one of my favorites, honestly, uh, for two reasons. Because uh, my favorite color is orange, so I think that's cool. He stands out. He just grabs your eye. There's just so much going on. And, I mean, tell me this thing does just not look so 80s. This is... Like, just the stripes, the orange coloring. Oh my god, this thing is just... This thing is... So, this, this thing's, like, so kitsch, it's not even funny. But just just, just so cool. Um, I don't believe that this one was the one that was supposed to have the uh, the trailer. I mean, I could be wrong, because he does have the little pin for it. But uh, I don't know. Like, well, I have two of these, and when I picked them up, it didn't come with a trailer. So he very well may be that version. It's just hard to tell, because I think they both have this. So how do you know if you don't have that? Uh, but other than that, I mean, looking at the uh, the figure, it looks really cool. Um, he has the little chrome on the wheels, the mufflers, uh, you know, and like the base plate to step up into the truck. The all chrome grill, the headlights. You gotta love those stripes. He even has like the chrome interior, which I don't know how much you can see of that inside of the uh, inside the windshield there. The windshield's nice and nice and clear. You got the details on the top of the hood and those stripes. Man, I just love those stripes and. Um, He's, he's just called Stax because of these. So you can tell, this was like, they were trying to make an Optimus Prime without breaking any copyright law. So this was their, like, hey, we've got a tractor trailer, you know, toy too, which, you know, they were throwing out there. And they were like, okay, how do we make it without getting sued, you know, by Hasbro or whatever? And uh, it's, he's, obviously, he, he can't, you know, hold a candle to Optimus, but he's his own thing, and that's cool. And I, I just think he, he looks really, really cool. So let's go transform him now into his uh, into his robot mode. So we'll just take his legs and fold them down. And he just space them apart. Put the feet forward like so. Fold the back wheels in. This clips back. Bring his arms down. They fold out. Head flips up. And very, very easy. Like, you know, these transformations. They're not as basic and cheap as your regular GoBots, but they're still nice and quick and simple, which I think you have to be able to appreciate that. I mean, as much as I love Transformers, some of them are so freaking complicated. I mean, they came with instruction manuals of how to transform them, and even some of mine I still forget and have to look up videos on the internet when I'm trying to <laughs> get one of them transformed. They're, they're just so complicated. Um, but this is him in his vehicle mode. He has kind of these goofy... Sasquatch arms. Um, again, I don't know if he would have had a uh, had a weapon or not. Um, oh, there we go. He can move his arms out a little bit more like that. And um, he's pretty neat. He's got the stripes on the inside too. That was the uh, in interior that we saw behind the uh, behind the windshield there. And um, pretty cool. He's he's definitely kind of strange looking when you stand him up like that, but I think he looks cool. And you know what? In the world of transforming robot toys, strange is good. Strange is good. So that is, that is Stax. Now you want to talk about strange. This guy's strange in his own right, but not for what you would think. Number one, you see this Porsche and a lot of things pop into mind. You're like, oh cool, he kind of looks like, you know, maybe a uh, like Blue Streaks or Jazz or even like, you know, Bond, like 007. Like, there's so many images that pop in your mind, which I think is cool, and I think that's why they went with this type of design. I mean, I even had just this random generic remote control toy that was like a silver Porsche. So Porsches were all the, all the thing back in the 80s. Everybody was turning everything into a Porsche. And um, a really nice looking little car, even just as a standalone by itself, it's a nice car. You have um, the Porsche logo up here. You have the Porsche logo down here with the little shield on the front. Uh, you have the uh, 930 Turbo sticker on the front. 
Uh, the Porsche logo on the side, the wheels, which are a nice rubber. They're a little dry rotted after all these years, but still looking pretty good. You have the black rear spoiler, the Porsche logo on the back, another 930 turbo sticker on the back. You have the uh, the tail lights that would have lit up with the Porsche logo. So there's a lot of great detail on this, even with the lights on the side. You know? So a lot of nice attention to detail to really make sure that this looks, uh, you know, just like, just like the way that a, uh, that a Porsche is supposed to look. So now let's get him transformed. And uh, oh yeah, the one thing I forgot is um, not only, if you're wondering why this is such a, a strange uh, Super Gobot, well, guess what his name is? His name is Baron Von Joy. Now, if that just isn't the craziest name I've heard for anything, Transformers or Gobot or practically anything related, um, I wish there was a more of a story to this or a card back or anything that I could read just to understand why his name is Baron Von Joy. And that, that really seems like a James Bond reference or something. So weird, but hilarious and great. I love it. So it just it adds to the weirdness of all this stuff. So now let's let's get him transformed here. And uh, we're going to take and we're going to move the back wheels, which kind of tend to get stuck here a little bit. There we are, and we flip these down. No, that doesn't sound good, but that's actually, they're just clicking into place. Anytime you hear that sound with old plastic, it always makes your skin crawl because you think something's about to break. And then you uh, flip his arms out here, and with a lot of these cars, their arms are so silly and goofy looking, they, they are really funny. I think they just, they just look bizarre. And then we just gotta slide his uh, headpiece. Let's see, that just kinda, Matches there. I think it's a little locked in place. This is where it gets tricky with these. They don't always want to move. Uh oh. Baron Von Joy is not a joy to transform. Come on, bud. Alright, I'm not sure what's going on with that. is definitely stuck. Ah, there we go. Okay, that's where you gotta really be careful because this old brittle plastic is just so scary to handle when you're trying to get some like a little stuck part unstuck. And there's just so many things that are moving around. Oh no, now he got himself restuck again. This is a really complicated guy to get transformed. There we go. Phew! Baron Von Joy, sir, you were a workout, but we did it. And there he is in his uh, joyous splendor. And he has these cool little uh, weird 80s robot hands. Look at those little little pincers, little grabbers there. They're, 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 they're so iconic, like uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 type robots, if you imagine. And it's kind of creative when you think about it. Like, when you look at the Transformers, like, would this be the more accurate way that a car would transform? Like, would that really just be the head by itself? Or would it look like what we've come, you know, to know? How would a car actually transform? You know, is that that far off the mark? His headlights or his eyes, you know? So that's, that's kind of neat, different interpretation. And I, I like his color scheme. I like the red and the black and the silver. I think that all complements uh, very well. And he's a really, really nice looking... Uh, Super Gobot. It's, it's so funny. These I keep wanting to call them Transformers because they really do feel and look, you know, very similar to like Transformers that we know in the line. Because when you stand them up, you could kind of blend them into that um, universe. All right, and here we have another weirdo with another bizarre name, and this guy's Zemod. What a crazy name, right? And he's he's supposed to be uh, like a 1983 or. 84, I think he's like a like a Thunderbird. Fair Lady 280, ZT Bar Roof. Okay, so yeah, he's he's supposed to be kind of like a T-bird with like the T-tops, um, you know, with the doors that would flip out, um, you know, like on on the real cars. And now he's he's definitely seen some better days. He's pretty beat up. He's supposed to have a uh, a hatch that would lift up here over the trunk, and one of his wheels is totally dry rotted and is gone. Uh, but you can still see the nice sticker, you know, the Firebird on the front here. 
Uh, there's the Fair Lady ZT logo on the front. He's missing one of the headlight stickers. Got the nice chrome headlights, though, some nice red color. Um, you got some nice designs here, like with the stickers that would have been like the uh, the vents, you know, like speed vents on the side of the car and everything. I don't know why he's kind of sitting like that. There we go. We got him a little more flush now. And uh, around the back, another sticker. Like like I said, he's missing the uh, you know the hatch on the back. And this is what I meant too earlier. I said about how a lot of the cars that they have drivers. And um, I guess this is supposed to be a British version because there's no driver on. Where you would expect so he's on the right hand side so for some reason this is modeled after i guess a british version of the car i don't understand it seems like most of them have the drivers on that side i don't get that especially since they're made in japan so but anyway now let's transform him into his uh into his robot mode and we'll just take his legs here and flip them out This will just go down, pull his arms out like so. Okay, and then we just flip the feet out. All right, now let's just bring this around down. Bring this up top. That's kind of neat now because you have like a driver in the top so it looks like he's piloting you know it looks like he's piloting a mech or something which is kind of crazy let's see if we can get that to like maybe level out a little bit there and yeah he's cool he's got some nice decals on the legs for like circuits and stuff like that so really really neat and i love the weird little arms on these guys so i think they're really cool they just have that weird 80s aesthetic of robots those weird little grabbers and the feet and the legs. So when you were growing up in the 80s, this is what a robot looked like. This is what you thought of when you heard the word robot, with like the weird legs and arms and feet and stuff. And they were so imaginative, imaginative, so uh, very cool. All right, and now this is one of the smaller ones in the series, but this is, uh, this is Defendor, and he's supposed to be a little tank, and there were two versions of him. There was one that had a, uh, a tank barrel that you could attach on the front of the barrel there. And then there was one that just, I think this is just the shorter mounted one. That's his permanent tank barrel. So you don't really see the, uh, the elongated barrel as much. And he's really neat. He has a really cool camo, um, camo, you know, paint deco going on here. Uh, he's got some neat controls under there for, you know, like the driver and stuff, even though he is his own driver. So he's supposed to be like a military half-track, you know, tank. And uh, not too much going on, but he looks really good. He has a nice design. He's got this weird little, uh, I don't know what that is, like a fox? So, kind of like, you know, desert fox or something. And uh, just, just just a cool looking little, little, uh, little car. So now let's get him transformed. We're gonna take his uh, arms, move them out to the side. Now the thing with him is he's actually a lot larger once you get him transformed than he looks uh, in his vehicle mode. Like you would think he would still be really small, and I guess proportionately he is considerably smaller, but not that much when you get him uh, when you get him fully transformed. There's his arms. They get a little stuck. Wouldn't they get stuck? And then we got his head here. But you can detach the uh, the turret. You don't need to, but sometimes when his head falls back in there like that, you have to. Because he has a problem where his head does not want to always stay upright. There we are. Alright, yeah, see, it, it just wants to fall all the time. 
And there we have Defendor, not to be confused with Defensor. And he looks pretty cool. He's definitely his own thing with a little blue uh, visor, the guns, and laser-mounted scopes. Some nice stickers on the side, uh, on the legs. Um, very simple, but still some nice detail work. And he is definitely smaller, um, but you know he still he still fits in with the rest of the uh, the Super Gobots. You know there was another um, tank that came out with this line that's obviously much much larger. But I, I think he still uh, fits in really well and looks really nice. We'll put him back over here, and that's going to do it for the uh, for the Guardians. Now let's scooch everybody over a little bit, and we can start taking a look at the Renegades. All right, and first off, of course, we have Psykill. Oh, man, I definitely think, without a doubt, he is my favorite out of this entire series because I mean just look at him right off the bat he's so iconic so recognizable and you know just so large so fantastic he got that iconic orange cockpit the red and white color scheme with the blue legs the mufflers his iconic goofy you know uh, suspension mounts that hold the wheel you know which are his arms and everything like that and it, it just looks great he doesn't really roll that well because of the way that this is designed, like, in order to, you know, put, put his wheels down. It's, it's just kind of weird. Like, he he's in his uh, motorcycle mode, but it's just, it's almost like it's for display because he really can't, there's not a way to really transform that and get him to, like, roll. So that that's that's kind of weird, but he's, he still looks good. You can still use your imagination. Still pretend, some nice chrome die cast there. So now let's get him transformed into his iconic cycle mode. And he's a little tricky too because you gotta get his wheel out here and then you flip this in, flip that in, put both of his arms in so that way this can go around to the back. And then his arms come back out to the sides. And there we go. We have our iconic renegade leader, Psycho Destroy Leader One and the GoBots. And man, how awesome does he look? Just with that, such a basic but beautiful uh, paint scheme on him. Nice paint job with the red and the yellow and the blue and the yellow, the chrome, the iconic face, those iconic big goofy arms and mitts for hands that he has and just looks perfect. I mean, is, is, is there any wonder this guy's my favorite, you know, in the series? And you, you don't even really notice that that much when you have him like this, because it just kind of kind of goes away when you turn him around. And uh, very cool. This, this looks great. They did a fantastic, fantastic job with Psykill, and I think if they had done a better job overall with, like, Leader 1, you know, as good as a job as they did with, like, Leader 1 and Psykill on these guys and gave them more of their own face... I think they would look a lot better and they would have been, you know, much more well-received toys. And now here, now this is an interesting one. This is another uh, Renegade. And this is Psycho. And uh, as you can see, he has a driver as well on the right-hand side. Little red guy on the inside there. Right there. And he's supposed to be like uh, like a futuristic like space car. And uh, yeah, he kind of reminds me of like... Um, I don't know, just just like just like some like some crazy weird like futuristic space movie or you know like maybe like in Star Wars those cars that are flying by. He's, he's just so different compared to the rest of the group. But that's what makes him look cool. He's got a nice uh, paint job with the black and the silver and the red. Uh, little headlights up front. That weird glass, like blue glass, the silver. A uh, little whatever that is doodad on the top there got his thruster engines on the back and then like these 57 Chevy <laughs> like tail fins on the back which are weird too so there's so much going on with them you don't know what's going on but a cool interesting uh, vehicle all the same so let's get him transformed now into his uh, robot mode here and let's see we're gonna get his legs out here first and get those flipped down get the feet flipped out Oops, forgot to take his arms out. There we go. Get his arms out here. All right, and then we're just going to 
lift this down, bring his arms around, and simple as that, you have Psycho. So I would imagine that Psycho and like these guys would be like arch nemesis, you know, because they, 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 they look um, so similar and they both have drivers, you know, on the inside, so like they're piloting mechs. How crazy and wild is he? Look at all these stickers, all these gears and gadgets, and these really cool, like, uh, lost in space type arms and, and hands and grabbers. And uh, just a really weird but crazy, that totally cool Japanese robot um, style and look that I think looks fantastic and looks awesome. So this is another great uh, Super Gobot in the series. Very cool. All right, and last but not least, we're gonna take a look at another one of my favorites. And again, unfortunately, he's a, another one of the ones that I have that's a little damaged. And this is uh, Bug Bite. And he is a uh, Volkswagen Beetle. And he's a little beat up. The stickers are kind of coming off him a little bit, but he still looks cool. Uh, he's got this awesome uh, bright yellow uh, paint job and just has that classic Volkswagen Beetle um, look that everybody knows and loves. You got the, uh, the trunk there, the headlights, the chrome bumper. I love those Beetle stickers, even though they're peeling off. The little sunroof, the back windshield, the front windshield, uh, that iconic front hood with the headlights. So very, very cool. Just such a nice, nice looking car. Now, unfortunately, why he does display like this is because his head, um, his head is broken. So you have to remove that separately, unfortunately, with this guy. And I'll have to see how he's gonna look in a second here. I'm not even sure. But we're going to uh, take his legs out here. There we are. And then these flip around. And we'll take his arms out. So they all kind of, uh, most of the cars, they transform pretty much the same way. And then his head would go on top like this. There we go. And there you go. There is Bug Bite, unfortunately, with his head a little askew, but overall you still uh, you still get the you still get the idea. There we go. Now he's looking a little bit a little bit better, and uh, yeah, very very cool looking. I think I like the uh, the black and red paint scheme with the pistons, the stickers, uh, the silver gray, and just a really cool um, addition to the series. And I really think he would have been better off as one of the guardians instead of as a bad guy, but uh, either way, he's still cool. He's just a fun, fun toy to have in your collection and just looks great. So let's put him back over here and hope his head doesn't fall off. Poor Bug Bites had a rough time at it. Alrighty, there we go, success. All right, guys, well, that is gonna do it for this uh, look at the Super GoBots line from uh, Bandai Machine Robo from the GoBots franchise. Uh, like I said, they're kind of an unknown toy line and a little bit forgotten about. Definitely weird, but super fun and super cool to collect. Now, as far as price goes, uh, if you're looking online for these, some of them are a little expensive, but generally, if you're lucky, you can pick them up at, you know, maybe a collectible shop near you or a flea market, and they're not going to be that high in price, at least from what I've come to find, just because, again, GoBots aren't that heavily collected. Maybe ones like Leader One and Psykill or Complete Stacks with a trailer, they might be a little bit more, but overall, they seem to be relatively cheap. I think they're really cool, and if you're a big fan of Transformers, GoBots, or just transforming robots in general, I absolutely think you should add them to your collection. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the GoBots, Super GoBots line of toys with me today, and I will see you next time.